you know how to play the drums. I do know how to play the drums. So which came first, keyboard or drums? Drums came first. I learned how to play the drum set. Then I learned how to play the talking you was drum. Playing, you was playing in the church. You For give sure. me you was in the church cutting sure. up on that. Oh. Yeah. Did not know that. <clears throat> so you, how old were you when you actually started playing the drum? Mm, five. Yeah. And you don't talk about that? Like, what? Yeah. I mean, my real, like, you know, my real day ones, they know. This is Illinois Radio with Biko, Illinois Jones, and Pretty Riot going down right now. And you're tuned in to Illinois Radio, Chicago's most valuable radio show. I'm your host, Biko, alongside Pretty Riot, Illinois Jones. And as always, we bring you all the illest guests from around the city and globe. And today we got the homie Wimmy Mo in the building. Hercules, Hercules. It's been a long time. What's going on, Wimmy? I'm all good. How you feeling? Bro. I saw you a couple of weeks ago at the event. Right. And I was like, gee, I ain't seen you in so long. Well, this is like seeing your little cousin in a long time and he yeah. grew up. He <laughs> got some facial hair. Yeah, you know what so do. <laughs> Boy, got some waves. Got, got, some, got the waves, boy. Yeah, the waves doing this thing. Got, what's, <laughs> got, what's got the silk on today? Yeah. Suby shirt. Yeah. Man, sure. bro, it definitely feels good to have you back because it's it been a long time. It's about three years. I'm coming. Yeah. Four, four. When yeah, you first four. Came. It's been yeah. four years. When I came, I think I was like I had. I think it was prom the next school. day or yeah. something. I had yeah. prom the day before and like graduation or some crazy. You shit. actually put it in the song. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you put. I think the song did the song feature Fem Fem Dot. Yeah, we did a freestyle. Yeah, yeah. Over the um Travis Scott Coffee Bean track. Yep. Yeah. Yep, you, de- you definitely put it in the song about how busy that day was for you in general, man. <laughs> no, for sure. But, uh, I mean, you know, it's it's been a minute. How, how have you been since the last time we seen you? Man, I'm good. I'm blessed. You know, it's been great. Shit, four years. You know, a lot of great things, a lot of lessons. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about it, my brother. You know, the last time we chopped it up with you, we was uh, chopping it up with you about your debut project, Bittersweet. Right. Um, since then, you put out another. You done put a couple things out, including your recent EP, which we just played a uh, single from, Lessons, Holding On to Yesterday. For sure. Um, but before you release Holding On to Yesterday, like you said, you know, you just been chilling, learning some lessons. So yeah. let's talk about, like, the, the hiatus that um, recently took place with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um I mean, with the with the excuse me, the hiatus. Um, that really hit definitely um during pandemic. So, you know, I had a lot of great things lined up, but that happened. So, learning to adjust, you know, what I'm saying. Um, but just like you know, feeling like myself again was like definitely an uphill battle. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, nonetheless, you know, I was able to document it. I was able to still create, and um, you know, put it out in the project. What were some things that you were dealing with? Um, shit, just, I mean, one, I wasn't making music as I usually did, like, on, you know, on a day-to-day basis, just because, like, studios was closed. I was out in, like, New York at that time, too. So, like, yeah, as soon as the pandemic hit, I was in New York, so I was, like, in a whole different state. So I'm trying to, like, figure shit out, you know what I'm saying? Um, But then, like, I had, like, um, when I was in New York, I had actually the um, rhythm and flow. Like, I was doing my audition for that and shit. Out in New York? Yeah, no, I mean no, shit. as in like virtually, like oh, as in like okay. I was in New York, you know what I'm saying, sending through my audition and shit. But then like pandemic just hit real bad and everything got shut down. And then um, I had a a whole album I was supposed to drop, but then like the album wasn't hitting. Like you know what I'm saying, the music I was I made just didn't feel like I didn't it didn't feel I didn't feel like it represented me no more. Like I didn't feel like it stuck. Like I didn't want to re- put that out and like you know have regrets. Could 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 that have been because you were in a different environment at the yeah, time? Yeah, different too? environment, different you know mindset, different space, you know. So it's like scratch that. Let's work on another album. I mean, speak on you know why? Like actually, speak on what led you to New York? <clears throat> Excuse me, led, led you to New York in the first place? Um, I was just trying to expand. Like I had um some shows that I was trying to do out there. So like you know just expand. You know what I'm saying? Just get. Cause I feel like with the with the audience in New York, like the market ain't too off of like you know the market I got here in the city. So it's like just really connecting the dots for real. Did That's you try the pizza? 
That shit is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that shit ain't it. Nah. I had to bring it up because nah. G Herbo was recently on Twitter. He put, I mean, he put up a video talking about Chicago pizza versus New York. So I had to ask, yeah, see if your nah. taste buds was the same. Nah, nah, Chicago got the best food. Everybody know that. <laughs> That's funny as hell. You said that fast to the bubble. <laughs> no hesitation. Nah. He said that shit trash. Nah, I ain't gonna lie to chopped cheese. I was just about to ask, did you get a chopped cheese? Yes, from the bodega. <laughs> that shit a hit. I fuck with that. Yeah. Chopped I cheese. I don't is know hard. what that is. Is that a what is I've, I've never been to New York. Sorry. Yeah, chopped cheese, that's like a hoagie or some shit, yeah, right? It's like, it's, like off version, off, yeah. Yeah, it's like our version of a hoagie. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Basically. So but, okay, you say chopped cheese. So what's is it ste- Philly? Is it yeah, steak? Is it steak and they got the buns? And then they just cheese. do like cheese, of course, um, lettuce, throw some tomatoes. But, which you even being in New York, I mean, were you able to uh network the way you wanted to? Nah. I mean, yeah. Like prior to like COVID hitting. But um yeah, like I went to Couple of events, um, met some producers, engineers, and stuff that I'm still connected with now. So, so, like, did you go up there and then it was like, damn, pandemic tomorrow, today, everything shut down like that? Yeah. God, type shit. Damn. Yeah. That was like that movie, Tomorrow After Next. <laughs> damn. Yeah, so, was, you, you had a whole rollout to go plan out some shit, do some shit, and then the next day you watching the news, like, all right, now nah, before. Damn, you was like us. We was getting ready for an event. Yeah, yeah. we, yeah. Mm, and they yeah. shut the whole city down and like uh, 20, 20 and, minutes later. And the event was about to be, it actually was over, it was going to be over capacity. It was one of them type of days. And 20 minutes before the event happened, we got the word. Lawrence Can't do Lightfoot, it. Lightfoot, shut the city It went from 1,000 capacity to 500 to 100. And then to like, nah. Y'all can't even do it All in a day Man. So that that's crazy that So you went through that Like Out there in, in New York In a whole different state Man that shit was crazy so, Was that intimidating Like being so far away From home And then like Everything just shut down Yeah It was confusing It was like Damn this is new Like How me get back home <laughs> did, you wanna, oh, did you wanna come back home? Like did you like yeah, did you wanna spend quarantine like in New York or would you have rather done that in Chicago? I was tired of Chicago at the time, so I ain't gonna lie, I definitely was cool with it. But then after a certain point it was like, Okay, I gotta go home. Yeah. Like, I definitely gotta go home. But yeah. The Illinois app is available now on Apple and Google Play Store. Download the app, get the latest news, stream our podcasts, watch interviews, and listen to Illinois Radio Live. Download the app right now. Um, so off break, we were kind of just, well, you also mentioned too, before the break, you talked about actually scrapping a whole project when the pandemic hit. So like um, off break, off air, you were talking about scrapping two projects. So like what <laughs> what helped made you arrive at that decision to be like, dang, I'm not even going to put this out anymore. Yeah. So like I'm like my biggest critic and it's like a gift and a curse. I'm a perfectionist. Um, but with working on the second project, it was like <clears throat> the like it was it has something to do with like just like the vocals not being it, like not meeting my deadlines, you know, like with my engineer and um just like you know certain team you know goals that just not being on the same page. So like I I actually dropped some of those songs as singles though. Mm-hmm. Like I ended up dropping like two singles that um came from the project and. I mean, them songs are still in the cut, so like, mm-hmm. it ain't nothing to revive them. Could and that still bring them out? Could it been that you were here and your engineer was there, or were you all together in the same? Yeah, we. I mean, um, a little of both. Like we was together, but then after a while, like he was there and I was there. So like, the communication and being on the same page. Um, you know, what I'm saying that was a struggle, um, but nonetheless, you know. <clears throat> Like though, like I said, those songs are still in the cut. I still got those tucked. I still um, plan to use them. So. Were you ever like overwhelmed <laughs> mentally through that process? Because I know, like even just for non-artists, like humans were overwhelmed when the pandemic hit. So, like, for how sure. did that? Like, how did like the pandemic actually overwhelm you? And how did that affect like your creative process? Yeah. Um, so it, it 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 definitely helped it in the beginning. Um. But after a while, I definitely came to a point where it was like I felt like I was mentally defeated mm. just because, like I said, I'm my biggest critic. So with that, it's like you just dig yourself in a hole and you keep digging, you keep digging and you realize like, damn, I, damn, I got to get out. Like, I just dig myself this deep type shit. So how but, did you dig yourself out? I was just going to say that. Um, Playing music. 
Well, actually, I was going to say how you dig yourself so deep. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's why I, I mean, like, I mean, to be honest, like digging myself deep came from like. So what I would do, like substituting what I would usually do when it came time to like um, create, like so, like I, I mentioned earlier, um, last time we talked, actually, um, playing a keyboard definitely helps me a lot. Like playing music is like my bread and butter you get what i'm saying that's what mm -hmm. i love to do and that's what you know inspires me and that's what helps with my you know my songs um so like instead of doing that i'm smoking you know what i'm saying yeah. i'm drinking i'm finding you know what i'm saying i'm substituting that just to you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. so you, you know uh, nonetheless it's like i think that was everybody's thing over the past trying to show. cope and figure out what, what to do to with do? all this yep. time What's that we just had what was something that you learned about yourself during that whole pandemic I'll say my biggest takeaway was um, understanding that um, I guess like just understand just like what I learned about myself is that I don't know enough about myself. Mm. So instead of so instead of taking <laughs> instead of um, you know what I'm saying using that time to like <clears throat> I guess like um, how am I trying to put this? I guess like taking that time to just repackage and go into like things that I ignored in the past would have like helped me get ahead. You get what I'm saying? Rather to just fucking time off. You get what I'm saying? Truthfully. Um but yeah that's I feel like it's the biggest thing I learned for sure. That's what about musically? Um <clears throat> biggest thing I learned musically? Yeah. Um I mean I was producing a little bit too during the pandemic, so like I also was dabbling in that, but like I said, my focus was uh, you got some heat. You got some heat, huh? No, I definitely got some heat. I could believe it. Like like I, said, I got, got a high sixteen. I, I was working on that during the pandemic, so let me know. Look, see, look, look, the real. Me too. Yeah, look, me too. He gonna bring me out of retirement. <laughs> Ooh, let me find out. <laughs> yeah, you know something I recently found out about you though. It, it was a comment under my post that you know how to play the drums. I do know how to play the drums. So, which came first, keyboard or drums? Drums came first. I learned how to play the drum set. Then I learned how to play the talking you was drum. Playing, you was playing in the church. You For give sure. me you was in the church cutting sure. up on that. Oh. Yeah. Did not know that. <clears throat> so you, how old were you when you actually started playing the drum? Mm, five. Bro, yeah. And you don't talk about that? Like, what? Yeah. I mean, my real, like, you know, my real day ones, they know. But, like, yeah, I definitely should sh shine more light on that. How we many instruments? Ones, so yeah. are the keyboard and the drums the only instruments you know how to play? Um, And the talking drum. So, like, I know how to play two instruments. What is the okay. talking drum? Um, So it's a, it's a Yoruba drum. So oh. it's a Nigerian drum. Um, And it's, like, for the Yoruba, Yoruba people and... What it do, what it does is like it talks, so like it you know goes it has different tones, mm -hmm. so it resembles like you know certain proverbs and like things that the Yoruba people like you know live by and stuff. So it's just yeah, that's that's what the talking drum. You're is. a talented yeah, brother cool. over here, man. Look, look at you got sure. secrets. Because <laughs> look, if uh, I think his name was Hassan, I I don't remember that. I hope I said it right, but I know uh, he definitely commented. And was like, yeah, you gotta hear hear him on the drums. I'm like, I I, I didn't even know when he played the drums. <laughs> so learning that, I'm like, all right, we got we gotta touch on that because dr I tried to play the drums as a kid. I thought I would be good because I know how to be on the table, but drums is a whole nother animal, man. Yeah. And for you to start that at five years old, yeah, bro, that takes a lot of creativity. Matter of fact, it takes a lot of uh, multitasking. It does And discipline yeah. I was about to say yeah. discipline And discipline, yeah Do you feel like you have like a sonic advantage over other artists? Because you like because you can play certain instruments? Yeah, I definitely do, I ain't gonna lie I definitely feel like I do Like, um, I grab inspiration like from certain drum patterns I let that um, help with my cadence and my flow um, But like also like with Like I wanted to learn how to play the keyboard Just cause of like I love how chords sound so like that's like, like the soulful aspect you always hear in my music. Like that's something that I always want to, you know, push for and, and just you know learn like to get better at. Now, since we on the topic of keyboard, you said keyboard got you out that deep space. Um, what finally you know pretty much sparked for you, what was the spark for you to say you know what? Even though I kind of like put these other two projects to the back, 
I want to put together an EP and give some, you know, give an EP out called Holding On To Yesterday. Like, yeah. what sparked that for you? Um, Just knowing that motherfuckers was waiting, you know what I'm saying? People was yearning for the music. Um, I was eager to put it out, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, I got to let people hear this, you know? So just creating so much and feeling like it was that time. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, before we going to go into another music break. And then we it might get a little spicy in here. Make sure to check out the Illness playlist in which we provide you with the latest tracks we play live on our show. Head over to Spotify and search Illinois Radio to follow our playlist as well as follow our podcast. Now let's get back to the show. So, holding on to yesterday, why only four tracks? Um, I mean, that's all I, I feel like I got straight to the point with four tracks. Um, it was real cohesive. So, you know, I didn't want to... Sonically, I kind of want a different, you know, direction. It's not something that people usually used to hearing me um, on, like just that, you know, that that that, I guess that type of vibe. So mm-hmm. I feel like four tracks did it. You, you it sounded like you were smoking a good strand for the first time, <laughs> and and, uh, and you was like, "Yo, this shit got this shit here. This this shit hit different." No, nah, for sure, it's definitely smoking music. Because I drove home from vocal or listen to this shit like, "What the? Fuck? Let me turn this up." <laughs> I had a shorty talking on. Turn this up. You out talking louder than the music. <laughs> nah, we vibing. Uh, I also wanted to know, like, on the projects and the projects that you said you had tucked away. Did you produce any tracks? Um, co-produced. Yeah, um, Lesson Shadow Abnormal, um, he produced that, and um, I just helped with a few things. I ain't do too much, but um, you know, with my next body of work, I definitely will. You know, you'll see the name and the credits with the producer. All right, for sure. That's the one I'm, I got my 16 for. I already heard it. Okay, yeah, for sure. We gone. <laughs> Can you break down like the title, like holding on to yesterday? Like, how did you come? Up with that title because that's a really good title. Thank you, pretty right. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a drop. A drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, holding on to yesterday, shit. Um, so I felt like you know everybody go through what they go through. Um, so just finding power from what it was that you went through is what the the, the title is about. So just having finding acceptance um, and finding power. And yesterday, because it made you who you are today. Okay, so you hold, you held on to some things. What did you let go of from yeah. yesterday? Yeah, so like the first half is um like the first two songs go into how I was holding on and how it wasn't doing no good for me. Um, and then the second half is letting go and um appreciating it. You know what I'm saying? Looking at it from a different you know viewpoint. Yeah. So you had a little short story in the sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So That's was that cool. like real therapeutic for you writing this project? Hell yeah, because like I feel like it's the most vulnerable I've ever been. So definitely was help. You know, it helped me, and I hope it helps. You know what I'm saying? The motherfuckers that listen to. Is vulnerability something that's scary to be on a track? Like especially like as a male, like people. Ex- I feel like with with men artists, sometimes like depending on how you make your music, people expect a certain type of image. So is it hard to be vulnerable sometimes? Nah, because, you know, I made a vow to myself that I'm going to live in my truth. So with that, that, it's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying shit motherfuckers too scared to say. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's real. Nah, that is. So if I'm comfortable with, you know, in my own skin, you know, fuck boo, what nobody (laughs) thinks. Facts. And I mean, me and you kind of like touched on this last time me and you uh, conversed. And I was saying my first listen to your EP, it felt like, you know, you were you dealt with the relationship that went left, um, and I mean, I guess I would say is is that true? Um, I wouldn't say go left. I'll more so say just, just it, it, you know, motherfuckers grew apart, like a relationship that grew apart. I feel like that's the best way to put that. Like, are you uh, are you and a young lady still at least in cahoots? Cool. Um, it's all love. I mean, that's all. That's all I can say. I hear that. I was, now I'm gonna get a little spicy with it. You know, uh, as far as relationship goes, what's relationship goals for you? Relationship goals. Relationship goals for you. Summertime shy. You go ask yeah, nigga about yeah, relationship goals. I look, I had this to go because because look, right look, so look, at, at the end this of the day, the street, it's eighty two degrees. You know how much ass he saw on the way here, right. nigga. <laughs> 
Hey, <laughs> at the end of the day, but you know, women want to want to know when you, you, you know it's yeah, mugs want to be free out here, and you can still be free, but it's also goals you have set if you want to deal or have a situation. Yeah, so I don't have no relationship goals, um, but if I was to be in a relationship, my goals would be, um, you know what I'm saying, be transparent, um, meet me halfway, you know what I'm saying, we should have an understanding of what we're doing. It's What's like, a non-negotiable for you for relationships? Um, non-negotiable for me. Like, if she do this, you boot, like, big boot, like, we... I mean, you still talking to your ex, still kicking it with your ex. You gotta go. Like, that's like cheating, damn near. Though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so. yeah, is is that something that took place in your recent uh, relationship? Nah, nah. <laughs> someone play it. Nigga. <laughs> damn, nah, Nico, he it. said he was getting spicy, but <laughs> I said I was gonna what you th- when I say Jesus. getting spicy. I'm talking about look. This is conversation. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it's good for men to talk about stuff like like you just talked about vulnerability. Absolutely, this is us being vulnerable. M- women don't really hear us men talk about relationships like that unless it's those podcasts that's dark. All get mugs out Or you future Hey, hey, hey Listen here, okay You're not gonna talk about my brother Okay That's why I'm first of all, a podcast Hey, hey first future. off You don't know what that man been through Okay And okay. you what do you, What he say He say y- Y'all don't know what they did to me Yo, yeah, exactly. exactly Y'all don't know what happened to him I he, Listen Shout out to my brother Future And my uncle Kevin Samuels Okay That's why I bring up n- None of None of those fellas I Those just my people Right the, there Some man. of the platforms So you know that's, that's why I'm like At the end of the day it, It's dope to Hear you know Your side And what you feel Works and what you feel Don't Because it's a conversation That needs to be had For you know Everyone Relationships in general Is not easy to maintain um, in order to keep a relationship, conversation is needed. So, and communication is a big part of everything. So that's why I'm like, it's gonna get a little spicy. Let's talk. No, that's it. Sure. And that's all. Even though player season is around, hot girl summer is back. It's hot boy summer as well. You know what I'm Listen, saying? As y'all can see, nah, Biko, the, the brother that's gonna right talk now. to you and convince you to maybe you need to work on a relationship. And hell you know, no, no, no. Me on the other hand, I'm gonna say, hey, Nick, hey, hey I'm here. <laughs> Look, I'll let you in September. <laughs> it's tryouts oh, all summer. Oh, oh my crazy. God. I mm. mean, tryouts. play ball. Ball so, like Kobe out what, here. You hear what, me? What, <laughs> as far as holding on to yesterday, ball. what's one of, to you, out of the four, you, you can't say all four, uh, but what's for you one of the most impactful singles that you made for that EP? Um, To me, most impactful. I say Angel Eyes and Butterflies. I feel like everybody got the same feeling from it. Mm-hmm. Everybody, like you know, says like, "Yeah, and that shit really hit me." You get what I'm saying? So I feel like that that goes to show that you know what I'm saying I'm not in this alone. You know what I'm saying? People resonate with where I'm coming from. Was that the first record you recorded for the EP? Um, Holding on actually was okay. the first record. Yeah, funny enough. Wow. <laughs> now, how, did, how did you know recording the track? Which songs was gonna be and how the the, uh, the, the order of the track list? Um, <clears throat> I was just really going off of the message. So, like, like I said, the first two songs talk about how um, um, I'm holding on to, I'm holding on in a toxic way. Right, you get what I'm saying. So also, the like me- a story. Yeah, For but sure. on on top of like how the songs were sonically. So, like, the first two is real chill. Then, like, with the third, it's like you know, in the middle. And then like lessons kind of got that eight oh eight. I found my bounce back. That bounce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got my bounce. Yeah. Like, I'm over. You sure? To just, uh, I'm good, baby. <laughs> Jones. He, is hell. he clearly good, felt baby. the project. Yeah. Yeah. Jones is clearly yeah. feeling it. Look, me too. Hey, look. Hey, you get like that. You, real. you forget you a player sometimes. You gotta shake back. Your partner gotta hit you. I'm like, nigga, what are you doing? Hit that Trey Young. Yeah, what? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta oh, hit him with man. that. <laughs> I got it. I'm back, baby. Look at him with me. Uh, you got to let people know, you know, um, matter of fact, how they can get in tune with you, how they can stream the project. Uh, and back outside is back open. Do you have open. You have any more events coming soon, my brother? Um, not right now, but definitely tap into my social. So when I do, y'all do know. 
Um, so on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, that's Wemmy Mo underscore Wemmy Mo, excuse me, underscore W E M M Y M O. Um, you can stream holding on to yesterday right now on all streaming platforms. I know you gave us four tracks on here, so it's like another four, another eight we gonna be getting in the months in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely like a couple weeks, a couple, you know. Oh, like singles like oh for sure. Oh, he said we so. dropping and forgot to bring this up before we actually get into your song holding on. Wow. You holding on to any visuals? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that I'm finna drop for y'all. Um, definitely stay tuned. Them visuals is well, Just just movies. stay on Illinois because we're going to get the exclusive rights. Movies. <laughs> I don't know about the rights. Right. I mean, Look, what you know? Yeah. Yeah. He said the rights. I said, hold <laughs> on. He said, I'm going to give it to him. Hey, yo, look. He was about to say right. He was about to say right. <laughs> he was about to say right. Yeah, I didn't. He registered right. See, look, we almost had him. Oh, visual that contract. Old. That's new. Nah, exclusive rights. Exclusive rights to drop it. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, listen here, okay? Let me dream, okay? You never let know. me dream. <laughs> Funny as hell. Damn, let bro. me land, all right? Let me land. Oh, my goodness. So, visuals is on the way. Thank God. I'm excited to see which vision. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm just excited to see which visuals you drop off the project because I know that's. One thing that's missing. It might be a no, short movie. Sure. We never know. Or a documentary. Sure. He said he was you were documenting things. Yeah, I've been working on a documentary for some years now, but um Oh she yeah. it's giving it's giving a genius. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna see. You it's know, we still we still in it. We still living it right now, so 